So in the last video I shared with you why you should become an environmental engineer. But in this video I'm going to share with you why you shouldn't be an environmental engineer. So I'm doing this video just so you guys can compare and see whether or not you really should be one. Hopefully you guys didn't watch the last video and think, oh wow, this is such a great career. Maybe I should just pursue it right away. I want you guys to see the pros and cons of it. And for sure I don't want you to just pick the career because I showed you all the good things about it. I don't want you to choose that major, come out of college with some amount of student loans, thinking that you just heard like the best things about it, and then all of a sudden you hate that job. Don't blame me for that. I have about five reasons why you shouldn't be one. So the first reason is that, one, it's a lot of hard work. So as an engineer, because you're in the realm, the same realm as being like a doctor, a lawyer, and an engineer, it requires a lot of work and requires a lot of skills. You have to be good in multiple different things. So yes, you have to be good at science, you have to be good at critical thinking, you have to even be able to be good with speaking with people. So I know most people would think that engineers, they're typically secluded by themselves, they don't really have any friends, they're always working, you know, maybe they're on the computer, they have like the don't bother me sign in front of the doors. It's not always like that. You do have to communicate with people. And you're probably going to be communicating with other engineers. So imagine you yourself who is an introvert, you're going to be talking with other introverts because you have to, you're required to for your work. Or maybe if you're in my field as a, like an environmental compliance inspector in a way, you have to meet with inspectors. You have to be able to communicate well with inspectors. Or you have to train people, you have to be in front of stages, you'll be in front of an audience, you have to present some things. So you will have to be able to speak clearly and effectively. You can't always just hide in your shell and think that this career is like, you know, for introverts. It's not like that. So you have to be smart and you have to be able to speak. You cannot hide in your shell, you can't be a little hermit, you have to be able to do all these things on top of being able to work well in school. And usually this difficulty is what stops people from pursuing like engineering overall. So they know that they're having to go through like all these science classes, they'll have like sleepless nights working on projects, or maybe they'll be working on a group project but they're like the only ones who are working in that group. I know you've had that before. Overall really, in college, when you're in engineering school, that's what really stops people. It's just the amount of hard work that you have to do. And all those horror stories that you hear from engineering students who graduate about all those sleepless nights and group projects, they're probably true. The second reason is that as an environmental engineer, you typically, although you do get paid a lot, you get paid not so much compared to other engineers. So as an engineer, there are like environmental engineers, there's civil engineers, there's mechanical, there's chemical, there's computer engineers. I would like to think that computer engineering might be like currently one of the highest paying salaries in terms of engineering. And I don't really know about every single field, but environmental engineers don't make as much compared to what they could be making compared to like a computer engineer. So again, my stats are 78500 a year, but compare that to someone working at Google. Or compare my salary to like a chemical engineer working at like a oil plant. Someone working in like the petroleum or oil industry. So my salary is not as much compared to some other engineers out there. It's not too low compared to like an average typical American salary, but it's not too high compared to like an actual or another engineering field. And so maybe in college you'll be in the same class as a chemical engineer or a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer, maybe taking the same math class or maybe taking the same civil engineering course, but you're not going to get paid the same amount when you graduate depending on their field and what they do for work. So yes, you all started in the same classroom, but you all ended up having different amount of pays and that all depends on, you know, their field. And so typically, environmental engineers do not make as much compared to other engineers. The third reason is that there's little job perspective in the future. So my speculation is that hopefully climate change will get addressed, but based off of the Bureau of Labor Statistics, the job outlook or like the job increase is 5%. I don't really know what 5% means. I don't know if it's meaning that 5% increase every single year or from 2018 to 2028, that's what it says on the website, is that it'll increase by 5%. So it could be like currently there's this many employees in the environmental engineering industry as of 2018. Later on in the future, 2028, there will only be a 5% increase. Again, I don't know what the numbers mean, but they say 5%. That doesn't look like there's that much demand, according to me, at least. But that's just my speculation versus what is actually out there, the actual data, based off of the Bureau of Labor Statistics. But who knows who will be right or wrong, it's just, that's what the data says. 5% growth every single year, which, according to me, is not too much. The fourth reason why you shouldn't become an environmental engineer is that it's a pretty difficult barrier to get into. So one, you have to go through school, you have to go through college, go through the university, go through classes, sleepless nights, group projects. It's going to be difficult. Then let's say you get your certificate, you get your degrees, you get your everything, your experience. Even with all that experience, 
you're not guaranteed to get an environmental engineering job no matter how much you apply for it, depending on your state and the demand in the future and so on. There's a lot of factors for that. But you're not guaranteed to get the job no matter how much times you apply and no matter how much your experience you have. So even though you went to school for like four years or however many years you took to get that degree, you're not guaranteed to get it. Even though you're in the same class with chemical engineers and civil engineers and all your friends are civil engineers and you graduate and they graduate as a civil engineer or a mechanical engineer and you graduate as an environmental engineer, that doesn't mean that you're all going to get hired at the same time. Someone's going to get a job in your group of friends faster than you. And it all depends on their field. So the thing about having like a low job perspective is that it's not so demanding as of right now. So if you're in, that's good. That's great. You're in. But if you're not in, if you're not within like the field or you don't have connections or you don't have any experience, it's going to be hard to even start to get in. You can't even get your foot in the door. For the most part, you just have to wait for some other environmental engineer to retire. And that's the sad part. So once you're in, you're set for life. You didn't really want to leave in the first place. Once you're in, you want to work there for like 20 years or however many years and you retire or you switch to a different position or something like that. But overall, once you're in, you want to stay there long term. But if everyone's thinking that way, if everyone's doing that, then no one wants to leave. Then how can anyone get a new position if no position opens up? And especially with like the low demand right now, if there's one environmental engineer for one facility, you don't need any more. So unless that one guy leaves, you're not going to get that position. So it's hard because no one really wants to leave. There's low job perspective growth, meaning there's not many positions that are going to open up. And once you're in, you don't really want to leave. So let's look at me, for example. Again, I'm sort of pointing this out again. So I got my master's in environmental engineering. I got my engineering training certificate, which eventually will lead to a professional engineer if I ever do decide to continue pursuing that. I have some experience working for like the research projects in the university, but I didn't get my current position as an environmental engineer until like after six months worth of applying. So I applied to 300 jobs. Yes, I remember 300 jobs because I had to keep track for my unemployment. I will say like about 100 of which were environmental engineering related and I got maybe six interviews. So out of the 100 jobs I applied for, only six actually responded back and like asked for an interview and I only got one offer out of those. So the first step was actually just getting the interview. So a 6% chance of me getting an interview and just one out of six chance to get an offer. So basically one out of 100 chance to get an offer. That was just me though. It all depends on your state, maybe your personality, but for me, even with my credentials, I couldn't even get past that first initial step. I couldn't even get past over 6%. And just me hearing that right now is pretty amazing because I'm surprised that I was able to get in with such a low percentage. Hopefully that doesn't scare you. I still want you guys to try if you guys ever do want to. Don't let my perspective and my experience deter you from deciding your own future career. I just want to give you a heads up as to what you might expect. And lastly, number five, the fifth reason why you shouldn't be an environmental engineer is because you have a very broad job description. So my title, yeah, it says I'm an environmental engineer, but my job description is not the same as another environmental engineer. So what I do in my work is really towards compliance. I feel like they should rename my title as environmental compliance specialist or environmental health and safety specialist. Not really an environmental engineer. I've seen some engineers, some stories that other environmental engineers, they work like on a desk doing AutoCAD all day, maybe designing some wastewater treatment plant. Some sit at their desk for like eight hours straight the whole day. Some sit at their desk for maybe four hours and then the other four hours they're out in the field. That's the case for me. I work half and half, so 50% out in the field, 50% on a desk. I don't really know what your job will make you do. It depends on your company and also like your job description. Again, every single job title and every single description is going to be different. So again, for me, I'm towards environmental compliance. I don't need to be a professional engineer to do what I have to do. I don't need to do any calculations. I don't even need to know AutoCAD to do what I have to do. Mine is just being able to speak with inspectors, being able to you know, speak with people, train people, just make sure they're following the rules and like being able to read pretty much and like Google search some things. I'm pretty much like the middleman in terms of how to solve a problem at my work. It's not like I have to have so much calculation knowledge and actually even apply anything I learned at school. All those designs and programs and calculations and formulas, I don't use any of that at all. But that is just me. That's just my work. I don't know if you have to do that for your work. And because of that, it's so broad. That's why I don't really know or like the fact that you can pretty much just have an environmental engineer or just an engineer slapped onto a title and then just think that, oh, he's an engineer. So word of advice, do be careful onto the title. Don't think that just because you have the word engineer on it means that you'll be doing actual engineering stuff. 
So that's why even for me, I don't really consider myself like an engineer because I'm not doing any calculations, I'm not using a formula, I'm not using AutoCAD, and I would think that stereotypically they do that all the time as an engineer, but that's just my perspective, that's just my thoughts, I don't even know if that's true. Alright, so those were some reasons why you shouldn't be an environmental engineer. And that's just my take on it, again, that's just my opinion, you don't have to believe that, hopefully you guys aren't like truly persuaded, but I do just want to give you a heads up as to what you should expect. Some pros and cons of the environmental engineering field. The field is weird and very broad. When I graduated, I was technically underneath the civil engineering department, subsection environmental engineer. So I was graduating with civil engineers and we both went in the same class together. They expected pretty much every student to know like AutoCAD, but because I came in with a chemistry degree, I didn't have any experience at all. But they just assumed that every student came in as a civil engineer for their undergraduate and if they got their masters for environmental engineering then you know they're just still civil engineers and they have that basic background engineering experience from their undergrad but I didn't have that and so you're placed pretty much underneath the whole broad umbrella when you graduate for graduate school and they just assume that every student's the same they assume that probably every single environmental engineer will have the same experience but mine was really towards like laboratory work not so much actual AutoCAD and designing projects. And so that's why I thought after I graduated from environmental engineering with a degree in that, that I'd be working like in a lab or at a wastewater treatment plant and then just, you know, testing for microbes, water sampling and so on. Not really towards like AutoCAD. So I feel like environmental engineering is a whole separate field in itself. It's not even subsection category of civil engineering. I feel like it's just a whole hybrid between like chemistry and engineering, but then there's like chemical engineering. So I don't really even know the difference. So basically just do your due diligence, do your research, make sure that you actually know what you're looking for, what makes you happy. For the most part, college will sort of weed you out. If you go in the first class and you don't enjoy it, then you'll probably realize this major is not for me. So it'll really all depend on you whether or not you can tough through it or whether or not you actually enjoy the class. If you enjoy the class, you might enjoy the future career. If not, then you know it all depends on you. Hopefully this video will help you guys in determining whether or not you should become one. And if you have any questions, just let me know down in the comments below. So with that being said, I hope you guys enjoyed the video and I'll see you in the next one.